Absolutely. And, you know, you talked about Serge Abari Rice, touched on him a little bit. I, you know, from these first two games that I've watched, dude, I'm just so glad we brought him in on the two way. Like you said, you know, he's a little skinny right now. He's going to have to put on some weight. Um, but, you know, dude, when I was watching the summer league, I know it's just summer league. And, and this is more of a comparison age wise and like journey wise than whenever it comes to play style. Although they are both six, four and it'll kind of be combo guards. Um, it reminds me of Derek White. I know that's going to sound crazy because Derek White was a first round pick. But remember, Derek White was 23 years old when he came in to the Spurs. Javante McCoy is 24 years old and had a crazy journey in college. A lot of it had to do with COVID. Um, I believe he was at New Mexico before Texas. And I believe he was at somewhere else, maybe even like a JUCO before New Mexico. I'm, I'm going to Google that to confirm it as of right now. Obviously, you mean I'm. Your part, right? Yes, yes. Okay, Serge you said Javante McCoy. Oh my so gosh, I, I did I really? Yeah, I Thank you so check. much. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I can't believe myself for that one. No, okay, no, so played at New Mexico State, excuse me, not New Mexico. New Mexico State didn't play anywhere before then, I got that wrong, um, but was originally from Missouri City, Texas, and so played four years there because of the COVID year was able to go play, you know, at Texas, which I assume was his dream school, um, his final year. And we saw him show out this season um, whenever it came to March Madness, had some big games there and some other big games throughout the seasons for them, because this was his one year at Texas. And he came in and was immediately uh, a starter and a key player for them. Um, so to see his journey kind of from mid-major to D1 because of the COVID year and then getting picked up on this two-way opportunity, it's obviously different than Derek White, but it's similar in the sense that he didn't have the traditional NBA journey. He's older coming in. He's a combo guard, but he was somebody on the first game, Ethan. He was like telling people where to go in the offensive set, like his first time facilitating. That's somebody who's experienced and has a high basketball IQ. I don't care what the situation is. You didn't see that from, from Malachi Branham or Blake Wesley last year. That's not me saying that Serge Ibari is going to be more talented or better than either of those guys. But that's mm -hmm. just an example of how him coming in at the age that he is with the experience he has is something is one, it matters, but two, it's something that's uncommon. Um, and, and obviously a lot of that has to do with his age, but it's even uncommon in the sense that it's uncommon for the Spurs. Like mm -hmm. you just don't usually see a guy coming in and like telling people where to go on offense in their first summer league possession, regardless of who it is. And I, like I said, the context is still key. He's not going to, I'm not saying he's going to be, you know, a superstar moving forward, but he's someone who brings a lot of skills and a lot of traits that just fit the Spurs. He was diving for loose balls. He's a good shooter. He, he created a couple times off the dribble as well on pull-ups. Um, and one of the things that the three things I was talking about, Ethan, when we came in or before the last game that we were about to watch on the live was I wanted to see his shooting and how that translated. That's that looked pretty solid. His ball handling. It looked better than I expected. I was not expecting him to really be facilitating in the sense that he was. I was expecting him to be more of a catch and shoot guy. And then defensively, he looked a lot better than than I thought as well, I believe. He had some steals. Yeah, he had three steals in that debut against the Pistons. Um, and he had four steals in, in the game against the Thunder. Um, so definitely the facilitation ability and the defense, granted it's still summer league, um, impressed me. Yeah, I mean, you took the words right out of my mouth. The, the, the most impressive thing for me was just his high IQ, his leadership ability coming in, like you said, like a general immediately. Um, he's a smooth operator. He stays calm under pressure. We saw that when he got kind of trapped in the corner there and he just stayed calm, a couple pump fakes, one dribble pull-up, baseline, 16-footer, cash. Smooth jump shot. I think he shot 20% from three in the first game and 17% from three in the second game. So I and only two games, small sample size. We saw what he could do at UT, obviously. So I'm sure that will improve once he gets to Austin. Um, but not a lot of flaws. And, and the most impressive thing for me, Jude, is – two completely different personnel groups that he was playing with in both games. Yeah. And pretty much the same consistent performance and stat line across both. That's a high IQ player. That's an intelligent guy that shows his age. He's not a 19 year old. He's what? 22, 23, 24, 24. I mean, because of the COVID year, remember? Yeah, that's right. He's 24 years old. So obviously those are things that he comes in with experience and expertise. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, and just another thing, I'm on his Wikipedia page right now. I didn't know this. To, to, to add on to the Derek comparison, he committed to play college basketball for New Mexico State. And this was after, like I said, he played at Missouri City in Texas at Thurgood Marshall High School. And he was a part of a, a Class 5A state title game. Um, mm. So, you know, pretty big time basketball, not 6A, but still you know, a, a place with a lot of eyes on it for sure. Um, and his only two scholarships coming out of high school were New Mexico State and UMass. Those were the only two D1 scholarships. So wow. someone who's kind of been slept on a little bit had to work his way in those four years to finally get the opportunity at his dream school. And, and now he's getting to play for another team in Texas. So um, just a just a good feel good story there for Serge Ibari. The nice thing for him is there's really nobody in his way when he gets to Austin. Because the other yeah. two guys that we'll be watching and like catering to in Austin are bigs. It's or CD Sissoko, CD Sissoko and um, Barlow. So Barlow, Barlow, and they don't play his position, so that will allow him to really <sighs> take the opportunity with both hands. Big three, big three big in three Austin. Is right. Big three is right. <laughs> the Lob, Lob City Austin Spurs. And you know, I wonder if we can get some more fans, uh, some Longhorn fans, out to some games to go for catch sure. them, just to just to get the vibes up in the HEB Center. 